Hello, I'm Professor Liu. Welcome to our live stream. We are doing another game show here, Art Prof Game Show, where you guys get to guess whether these artworks are done from a photo, from imagination, from life, or some combination of those. So I hope you guys will guess along with Art Prof Teaching Artists, Jordan McCracken Foster and Lauren Welch. Okay. If you guys would like to grow as an artist, but you can't afford an art class, and if you're stuck in quarantine, which a lot of us are, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof, critiques and tutorials. Okay, here's how this works. I'm gonna show a slide of an artwork and some detailed close-up shots as well. And Jordan and Lauren are gonna try to guess what the reference imagery was. So it could be from a photo, it could be from life, it could be from imagination, or some combination of those three sources. And Jordan and Lauren are gonna try to get as close as they possibly can. And you guys tell us in the chat if you think it's from a photo or something else. And then we'll have a reveal and show you guys exactly where the references are from. So let us know in the chat what you guys think. So we have this ink drawing of a house that is not in such good shape. Jordan, what is your first guess for the reference? Yeah, this one's tricky. I, I think that I'll probably say it's from a photo. Um, uh, I, I feel like there are certain uh, details that I'm missing that I would see if it were from life. And um, so that's, that's what I'm leaning towards, but it's still kind of tricky for me. Lauren, what's your first impression? And then we'll get more specific into your reasoning behind your guesses? I think, well, there's got to be some photo reliance somewhere because I just can't picture the artist going out and making such straight lines on site and also having such good uh, <clears throat> perspective. Like the, the perspective feels like really exact here or really straight in a mathematical kind of way that is not so easy to do when you're working from life. Okay. We've got some guesses in the chat. Neil is guessing it's Casey Runen's art. I'm not going to tell you anything. You guys can guess the artist as well. That's also a part of this process. And Neil says it's not from a photo. Slepnir thinks parts from the photo and parts from imagination. Nathan Ooh. thinks it's from life. And Neil also says Casey does really hardcore stuff from life. That is true. Casey, mm -hmm. Lauren, you probably remember this. Every time we're doing video shoots at Art Prof, Casey is there compulsively drawing all of us from life. So that's yeah. true. All right. Now, Jordan, why do you think it's not definitely from a photo. What, what is holding you back from being really sure that is the case? Uh, there are some parts that feel very loose, um, particularly in the shadows and on the right side of the image where all this, I don't know what is garbage or debris that's just uh, out on the side. And that to me feels very, uh, it feels like something more spontaneous that you would see from life. Um, yeah, it's, it's just those little elements. And so I wouldn't quite say it's 50-50, like but there might be like 80% 80 from, 80 from photo and 20% from life type of thing. It's really close to me. Now, Lauren, what about the person and also the landscape that's in the background? What do you think are the references for those? Um, I feel like, so the person is the really interesting part here for me because that really shows the sense of scale of the house, which is actually, even though that's probably something that could be picked out from a photo, I, that is the thing that makes me feel like there must have been some from life studies done from this because you really don't understand like the scale of a house unless you are there or see someone there. So I feel like... Um, perhaps it started out as some studies of this place in person with these kinds of feelings or sense of space and then finished up using like both 
the um, like the sketches and maybe like photo references and combining them together. The landscape, I feel like, is almost maybe something that is imagined or remembered. It's literally just a line for the trees. We've got some theories in the chat. TG says, I think it's from imagination and a photo. Now, this is a very interesting theory from Wilson Nathan. They are saying it's drawn from a photo, but the person has definitely been there in person before. Jordan, why do you think Wilson Nathan is saying that? Uh, there's a, I, I actually would really agree with that statement. I think that there's a familiarity to it and, uh, that the artist has, and there's something about it that makes it feel like it's more personal. Uh, if, I, if you were to just pick a random building that didn't have any meaning to you or, or even a house, you might not get so intricate with the details. And so I think that that might be where that, uh, that idea is coming from. And Wilson Nathan, I would love to hear from you why you think it's somebody who saw this in person at one point. Lauren, would you agree? Do you think that the artist has a personal connection or do you think this is completely concocted from something else? I, I agree. I think that there's a personal connection. There's just like um, a certain attention to detail that is something that I wouldn't expect from, you know, something that's either made up or coming from a photo. It's hard for me to really place exactly what that is. I think it's like little stuff like, say, the... Um, like demarcating every individual little post like on the fence or the way that there is like a very specific number of, I think they're called gables, tilted in different ways. Um, it just has this care to it that makes it feel really uh, like almost like a person, like it's a portrait of a house. And why would you do a portrait of a house unless you had a relationship with a house, you know? Neil is saying maybe he went to location and did sketches and studies. For sure. I mean, a lot of artists will do that. Like, for example, sometimes it's just not convenient to actually do the piece on site. So maybe you take a trip and you do some sketches. You take the sketches back to the studio and work on it there. I mean, I think what's interesting about a lot of these is when we have these hybrid situations where it's not 100% from a photo. I mean, you guys don't know. This could be 100% from a photo. Those of you who think it's from a photo, do you think it's from one photo? Or do you think this is maybe pieces of a photo? What do you think, Jordan? Because some people just take a photo and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that... It could, I think it could be multiple photos of, this, of the same house, or maybe it's uh, one photo of the house, like, and it's a like, very pristine house, and then there's other photo reference of the parts that are more destroyed, like, you know, the roofs and, you know, some of the walls are kind of caving in and stuff. So uh, it's possible that there's a combination in those areas. Lauren, what about you? Do you think it's a combination? Yeah, it's either a combination through, like, sketches at multiple angles um, or at different times, like Jordan is saying, or it is, uh, yeah, working from photos from different times. Like, yeah, the way that the top of that house is, like, a weird, like, singular house that is coming out of the broken house is, like, kind of feels like impossible like now that I'm looking closely at it like there's a door up there why is there a door up there you know um so now I'm getting the sense of like oh this is really also rooted in this kind of like imaginary amalgamation let's see Michael is saying it looks like a smaller house on top crushing the house below it okay so Michael's seeing that as well and Denise says it may be from life because it looks like the details are not obsessively done and Wilson Nathan says, definitely because of scale, as Lauren said, but mainly a feeling of familiarity with the character of the house. There's an ambiance in the drawing that you can't really get from a photo. Coco Novak says he might be an architect. That's true. Some people, <laughs> Lauren, are really good at linear perspective and can do that stuff. I know people like that. So this is definitely a possibility. Lisa H. says the top half still has a roof. Once you lose a roof, the rest goes quick. 
<laughs> and TG says, I think the building is from a photo and the background is from imagination. Okay, you guys ready for the reveal? Let's do it. It's yeah. from multiple photos. And Wilson, Nathan, you were correct. This is actually a neighborhood that is nearby where Casey lives. And so this is a house that Casey has somewhat of a personal connection to. I think that's amazing that you guessed that, Wilson Nathan. So Jordan, are you surprised or is this what you thought? Uh, it's kind of what I thought. I, uh, you know, at first I wasn't thinking about the multiple angles, but then as the conversation kept going, I was, uh, I, I started hearing some of the comments. I was like, you know, that makes sense. That makes <laughs> sense. And I think what really gave it away also was, um, Lauren's comment about the house being stacked on top of each other. I was like, okay, yep. It's gotta be a different photo. <laughs> I can't believe you noticed that Lauren. That was so specific. I don't know. I like the thing that really got to me was, well, okay. So Part of this is just like, uh, as some of you in the chat have mentioned, like we, we, we know Casey or I know Casey. So like, and Casey is always working from life and only ever draws things that he knows, even if they're from uh, uh, like a photo reference, he always knows them in some way. That's the stuff that he's interested in. And you can always tell when he's interested in a work. I mean, I think that's actually pretty true about like all artists. And so... Yeah, after it took a while to notice that that house was on top of that other house. Like, I did not see that at first. But uh, similarly, that was like what keep me in being like, oh, hey, okay, that definitely came from multiple photos for Casey, which I, I still think is kind of surprising. I do not think of him as someone that works from photos. Okay, you guys ready for the next piece? Now, yeah. this yeah. painting is not by somebody on the art prof staff. <laughs> It's a famous painting. I'm not going to tell you guys the name of the artist. I'm not going to tell you the name of the painting. Some of you guys, if you want, you can try to guess the artist or the title of the piece, but I'm not going to confirm it until we actually show the reveal. Okay, so Jordan, what is your first take about how this was made? Um, I think that a lot of it's probably from photo reference. Um, there's a certain stance that these uh, uh, figures have that uh, they like it. It feels like it's painted from life, but there's also a slight stiffness to it that makes it feel like it's posed. So I would say mostly from photo. Let's see. People in the chat are guessing Ruby Bridges, Norman Rockwell. Some people are saying they've seen this painting before. Okay, if you guys feel that you know the painting and that you're barely sure about it, let's break it down into some specifics. Because sometimes things are almost religiously drawn from a photo. And sometimes it's mostly, but then some things get made up, or maybe it's like Casey's piece that we saw before, where it's multiple photos. So let's start to get really specific. Okay, so Jordan thinks it's from photos. Lauren, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I would say this is from photos and what makes me think that is I'm not totally convinced by the lighting situation here. I feel like these, uh, these characters or feet or bodies have kind of been, uh, inserted in here. Uh, there is no attention to any kind of like cast shadows or anything. Um, but, and that's different from like the way that the lighting is hitting like the 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 rest of the bodies both like the skin of the of the girl and like the folds and the pants of the men so that's that's where i'm at okay lack of specific lighting situation denise flinch is saying the poses are very stiff damar carpenter says combination of photo reference and life lisa says wonderful fabric TG says, I think it's part from a photo, part from life, part from his imagination. Oh, wow. what That's oh, yeah. a real salad of <laughs> options. Anja Batik says, to me, it looks like a photo. Shabnan says, everyone's legs and feet position all look the same. They are all so synchronized. I think photo. Well, Jordan, what do you think about that? Because I think Shabnan makes a really good point that the feet are oddly really similar. Yeah. I was just actually thinking about that um, before like the comment even came up and I was like, 
wait a second, their hands and their legs are like the exact same. And I don't, I'm not a mathematician, but I can only imagine the odds of that happening every, <laughs> like at one time on the street is probably very, very slim. Uh, and so for that reason, I'm like, okay, you, you know, even if uh, this person got the reference himself, I feel like it's very copy paste. And they're all even wearing like little straps on their arms or little um, band, what do you, you call it? Um, now, yeah, Lauren, do you yeah. think anything is done from life? Because some people in the chat are saying that maybe parts of it are done from life. Or do you think it's 100% photo reference? Um, you know, I'm not actually sure about the, the from life bit. But I do think that maybe parts have been done from imagination. Like that wall and the text on the wall feels uh, not photographic, but also not from life for me. Um, so I'm guessing that I think sometimes the, the, the skin looks a certain way as if there's been like, a like a temporal, like, uh, you know, that time has been spent on it. Like the shadow has been like moving over time, but like, I can't really be sure. I think if there's anything done from life, it's not very much. And it's been very specific, like certain areas. So you're, you're saying the life stuff pretty minimal. Yeah. Okay, we've talked about the wall, the girl, the figures. What about the tomato and the big splatter? Jordan, what do you think about that? Um, this is one of those moments where, in the context of the whole painting, it feels very staged as well. You know, it feels like it's part of the same uh, story. And I understand that, you know, that's part of making art. But uh, just the way it's positioned, the way, the, combining that with the way these characters are, uh, it feels like it's you know, it could also, it's also very staged. It feels like it's part of the photo. Uh, okay. Well. Nathan is saying, I feel like the detail in the background is something you would emphasize more if it was from a photo. So I'm going to go photo in this one. Divan Day Studios. I have no idea if it's from photos or not, but it feels like a scene from a school in Little Rock, Arkansas. Though in that period, I don't know if the U.S. Marshals got involved. And Neil says, yep, there is something that it seems like they're not, they're naturally walking. Doesn't seem like they're naturally walking. And Lisa H. says, artists purposefully chose marching. And Michael Elisoy says, he met them and had them pose. So it was painted from both life and from a photo, but it was mostly painted from a photo. Damara thinks the girl is probably from life. People are saying it was staged. Now that's very different because... In theory, you can just get photos off the internet or magazines or whatever and just do that. But people are actually saying in here that it's a stage photo. Do you think that's true, Jordan? Um, to be honest, I'm not really sure. <laughs> um, I feel like if it was staged, then um, yeah, I, actually, I actually don't know. I don't want to be a. I don't want to make this like a cop out kind of situation, but I honestly, genuinely don't know if it would be a stage altogether. Um, yeah. What I guess my <laughs> my question is like, what does it mean to have something staged? I guess when I'm like dealing with reference photos or whatever, like of course they're always staged, like to figure out what something is. Like, how can those legs like not be staged? They're all the same. Yeah. Um, like how much stage, like what is the alternative? Vaporistic says from mannequin in a well-lit situation and diffuse light. TG says, if it's from life, I feel bad for the people who had to stand there <laughs> the whole time. And Denise Flinch says, I don't know if they would have staged that. I'd be very surprised. Shabnan says, I guess one man's position was used for all the men and the girl looks from life. Maybe. Okay. You guys ready for the reveal? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's from Good photos. Point. And they were staged very specifically. <laughs> this is a really amazing photo because I was blown away by his reference photography because I'd never really seen any of it until I went to the Norman Rockwell Museum in Massachusetts. And the whole basement is all these reference photos. So people were talking about how the march and the feet were so similar. Jordan and Lauren, do you guys see how there's these little pieces of wood that are underneath her feet? 
It's like Rockwell was so specific about wanting that because he knew that if he just had people stand there, he wouldn't have that movement in the foot. And also, do you see how the girl's hair is in three different hairdos? (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. Jordan, why do you think Norman Rockwell bothered to do that? He could have just said, oh, yeah, this is fine. Uh, You know, coming from the perspective of a concept artist, you want options all the time. And so I think to have these three different girls uh, hair with three different hairstyles, he could combine elements that he liked and fit and create the best scenario. And if you guys have not guessed what the subject matter was, this is an image of Ruby Bridges, who was a little girl. I think she was something like six years old or something. And she was one of the first black kids to attend a school that was not segregated. And literally she was escorted to the school by US Marshals because what happened was that there were all these really violent protesters that would show up and say and yell and say terrible things to her. And she actually, I believe, had to be taught by one teacher because none of the other parents wanted their kids being associated with her. So this actually happened, I think, four years before Rockwell did this painting and I don't know if you guys know this but Ruby Bridges is still alive it's amazing I mean she was at the White House a couple years ago with President Obama and so we're looking at this official White House photo of the actual Rockwell painting with Obama and Ruby Bridges and representatives from the Norman Rockwell Museum now I have a couple more representations because you know what Rockwell did pose himself (laughs) this is a photo of him in the pose. And I sort of wonder if maybe he was trying to explain to his models how to stand. And the reference photography is amazing with the way these marshals are. Lauren, what's your reaction looking at these references? I love them. I think they're amazing. It is so inspirational to see such intense research, like being a painter myself. Um, there's such a focus on, I don't know, having a, like making something look very improv, but I personally like put in a lot of research time into picking out just, you know, just the right poses for different things and just the right like lighting and stuff. So seeing the way he has taken so many elements and collaged them basically together into something that feels like you know, it has some photo elements, but also some very lifelike elements, like how I was saying, like parts of the girl really feel from life. Um, I think that's incredible. I think it's incredible to weave like that set of complex information together into one cohesive piece. Jordan, what do you think about the tomato shot? Somebody actually threw a tomato (laughs) and smashed it and took a photo for this. What do you think about that? You know, it's, it's really funny, actually, to me, because um, you would think that that's something you could just kind of make up. But I think the fact that um, one that's here in the fo- in the painting and that he t- had to have that photo reference, there was something very specific that he was going for. And because um, it's not just a smash but a uh, tomato, it's a tomato that was trying to hit this little girl or just or at least to scare her, or to threaten her. And I feel like there's a certain amount of force and just certain look that um that he was going for and i think it's really awesome i mean the tomato is beautifully painted and you can see the highlights and the sheen it's such a tiny part of the painting and yet it is a critical moment because it does speak about the experience that was happening damara is saying it feels validating as an artist who mostly uses photo references that i take myself that it was also done by such an iconic artist Yeah, and the other thing, you guys, these are such beautiful reference photos. I mean, you guys should look up, just Google Norman Rockwell reference photos. I mean, I really feel like he turned the reference photo into an art form. That This is not something you just throw together last minute. I mean, he really had a super specific vision of what he was looking for, and he went out of his way to stage that. So really, really cool. Okay, let's look at our third piece. So we are looking at a portrait with a pink sweater and we've got these patterns in the background and these geometric green shapes on the right. Lauren, what is your first take on this piece? Do you want me to guess what it is? 
Well, just or guess anything. I'm not going to tell you the artist or anything, oh. but I just guess. Okay. So um, I think a good portion of this was done from imagination, like the patterns and the geometry on the left and the right. But I think that the um, the actual portrait in the middle um, of this person uh, was probably done from a photo. And I feel that way because the of the really uh, bleaching out of the face, that like really harsh highlight looks like it was shot maybe like from a window uh, hitting the face and the camera like picking up, you know, only those brightest white spots. And Jordan, what do you think? Do you agree with Lauren or not? Uh, she literally took everything <laughs> that I could possibly say. Um, I agree. I think the it's probably taken from a photo. Uh, uh, you know, the the highlights on the face are so bleached out and there's so many of them that I just can't help but feel that way. And then um, I don't know anything from life that has those exact geometric shapes like that, um, that consistently. So I would say that's probably from, you know, well, imagination. Both, both of you picked up on the highlight being so bright and sort of flat looking. Lauren, why, in your opinion, is that an indication that it's from a photo and not from life? Um, cameras are kind of weird and sort of do like this. I mean, your eyes do this too, but they approximate like the white balance. And when you get like a highlight from a, a window or a light source or something, it's like trying to do all these adjustments and kind of inevitably like has to bleach a ton of area out. Um, whereas your eye is doing this a little bit when you're, when you're doing this from life, your eye is like recalibrating all the time and you're also picking up color during this. So um, like these, these lights and areas that would be really bleached out would actually have different colors to them almost that you'd be trying to pick out in different tones. It, it just would not, like this is a simplified version of how highlights usually are. Now, Jordan, if we are going into agreement, assuming that you and Lauren think it's from a photo, who do you think this person is in relation to the artist? Is this, hey, I want to just draw some person, some random person? Or is it, oh, it's a photo of my family members, my brother, and I want to draw them? So what is the artist's relationship with the person in the portrait? Um, it feels like a celebrity or like a pop star or something like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, there, there's something about the way that uh, the photo is, is, or I'm assuming from the photo, I'm a, there's something about the way this individual stage that makes it feel like uh, it's not just a family member. Like I've never seen another person take a picture of their brother or their sister and they have them posed specifically like that. I was like, it's a little strange to me. Uh, so it's more of an intuition, but I feel like it's someone they, they idolize or they respect as a celebrity. Yep. People are guessing that as well. Neil says, is the person a K-pop idol? And <laughs> Ironhold Sentry says, I feel like I've seen that post a million times, despite the additions to it. What do you think about that, Lauren? Does, does this feel like a pose you've seen it a bunch of times before? Well, it feels like a glamour shot, as uh, Jordan is saying. And... Yeah, I agree. I, I I mean, I was just talking about how much I like fight with my siblings and stuff. Like I would rarely take a glamour shot of my siblings. I don't know. It could also be like a I, I could see this maybe being like a portrait of like a, a friend or a love interest or something or even a self portrait where you want to like uh, you have some kind of idolization going on. Um, so I will also put that out there. I think like the pink sweater part is like really specific. Uh, I mean, partly because this painting is what it's, or painting drawing is called like pink sweater. Um, and then also cause that seems to be the thing that's really vibing with the, the patterns and the, and the geometry on the right and the left. So I, I don't know. I feel like that would be a very specific thing to attach to a pop star. But, you know, I, I don't know. I could be totally wrong. This could totally just be like some some fan art. Jordan, do you think it's fan art? Uh, I, I guess so. I mean, if we're qualifying fan art as being 
you know, I'm a fan of this individual celebrity. It, it, yeah, then, then yes. So, sure. <laughs> Let's see. We've got some other theories in here. Uh, Ironhold Sentry says, I do sense an emotional connection from the subject, but I do get the celebrity idea, actually. Bill Durdy says it's pretty common in movie poster shots. Vaporistic mm-hmm. says from life. Devan Day Studios, wife of the painter vibe. Interesting. Dice of Words mm-hmm. thinks it's a secret crush, friend <laughs> or celebrity. 10,000 Crows is getting specific. K pop band BTS. And Neil says, my classmate does a lot of K pop art. Her work gives the same vibe as this. And Denise <laughs> says, I don't know why. It seems like they combine references maybe from life and a photo. Although some people are saying Shabnan thinks that it's a self-portrait. Do you think it's a self-portrait, Lauren? You know, I I think, okay, so yeah, when people are talking about this this pose, this uh, certain movie type pose, I do see this kind of pose a lot in self-portraits and it's not just self-portraits like now. It's like, I think, who is it? Um, like uh, portraits from from like way long ago from like masters uh uh the, the person who starts with an r i can't remember his name painter rembrandt, rembrandt maybe yeah i feel like rembrandt would do a kind of pose that's sort of like this or i don't know uh the other it's it just is it maybe it is a self portrait of someone who is trying to pull out the best parts of themselves like who actually likes themselves, you know, but I do think that there's a lot of um, uh, like this person clear, the artist clearly is engaged and has a kind of love for whoever the figure is in here. Like it's clear, it's, it's a little bit sexy. So yeah. Damara is saying the pose is like girl with a pearl earring, which is by Vermeer, by the way, if those of you guys don't know, it's exactly the same pose, isn't it? (laughs) Looks like it. Let's see. And Puck Puck says, it's the I'm not posing, but totally posed shot. (laughs) Okay, you guys ready for the reveal? Somebody guessed correctly, it is by an art prof staff member. It's by Dorinka Arones, who is one of our production assistants. And I think what's really interesting, you guys, is to see what got kept in the photo and what got taken away and replaced by something else. So Lauren, what is your take on the use of the photo? Because Durenka used some of the photo, but not the whole thing. Yeah, I think, um, again, it's that pink sweater. That's like the real keeper here in all this. I think that's the most uh, uh, meticulously rendered from one thing to the other. And also the color palette more or less is the same. Like you still have the green coming in with the flowers. I think the flowers covering the face gives it this alluring kind of appeal. It's really the stuff on the left side that Dorinka chose to, you know, block out. Jordan, what do you think now that you've seen the photo? Uh, I think it's interesting. You know, when I saw the, the image I thought was from the photo, I initially thought it was done in uh, like a studio uh, or that it was, you know, had the white background behind them and all that. I didn't think it was actually a picture from outdoors. And uh, and the reason I thought that was because when I look at the photo, you see the yellow light from the sun just naturally kind of washing over the face. But in the drawing, it's very washed out. And that's something I would expect to see in the studio. So that threw me off, actually. Yeah, I mean, one thing that I do notice about the photo is that the skin is not as bright, stark white as the sheet of the paper. And so maybe that's what's making us think that it's studio lighting. I mean, I really actually love the left hand side with the striped tapes and the patterns. I like it better, I think, than the green shapes on the right hand side. But I think what's cool about this piece is that Dorinka didn't just like copy it verbatim. Like she actually went in and manipulated some of the shapes And I do think the left-hand side makes it a lot better. I feel like the rest of it in here is just all blurry and it's just green and not a lot going on, I think, on the left-hand side. Amy Paddock says, I think the background in the left is made of fancy decoration stick tapes. Yeah, probably like washi tape or something like that. Lauren, you use a lot of that stuff. Yeah, I love it. 
it's it's very fun and you can collect so many different colors Vaporistic, I don't understand how you could figure out this was by one of our staff because we have so many people on staff and everybody's so different. I think that's sort of amazing that you figured that out. <laughs> Insider knowledge somehow. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you will hang out with us in Discord because we usually go after the streams because I know sometimes people have questions or other stuff they want to talk about. So we'll be over there in a few minutes. Check out rprof.org. Lots of freebies for you guys to check out. And subscribe to our channel. Join the Art Prof family so you don't miss out on anything. And thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters who make all of these logistics possible. Thank you, you guys, for guessing along, for providing all of your theories. We will see you guys next time. Bye!